from the footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our 2013 preview of the New Orleans Bowl between the Tulane Green Wave and the University of Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with Tulane. In only his second year as head coach, Curtis Johnson has done a phenomenal job with the Tulane Green Wave program, and this week versus the Raging Cajuns, offensively, Tulane has to be able to establish the run early, and they boast excellent depth in the backfield with Orleans Darkwa, Rob Kelly, and Josh Rounds. Now, the running game is vital for Tulane because it makes life easier for quarterback Nick Montana to operate off play action and for wide receiver Ryan Grant to see more one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Now, I'm a big fan of what the Green Wave have on the defensive side of the football. Their battery, that's both defensive tackles, the middle linebacker, as well as the free safety, is very strong. And on the corners, sophomore Lorenzo Doss is one of the best cornerbacks in the country. Versus Louisiana, two things have to happen. One, Chris Davenport and Julius Warren, through the two defensive tackles, have to be able to get penetration up front. And the back seven has to be able to make plays in space as the Cajuns love to spread the field. Now let's move over to Louisiana in this ball game, and the Raging Cajuns have one of the most potent offensive attacks in the country, averaging 34 points a game. Head coach Mark Hutzpit has done a great job changing the culture in the program, and it's paying off with the amount of success they're having on the football field with three consecutive bowl game appearances. All eyes will be on the quarterback position as UL may be without the services of starting quarterback Terrence Broadway, who's 50-50 with the broken arm that he suffered versus UL Monroe. The saving grace offensively, however, is in the backfield with Alonzo Harris and freshman phenom Elijah McGuire, who has breakaway speed and is also averaging an eye-popping 8.9 yards a carry. Now defensively, this is a young unit and has made small improvements each and every week. The Cajuns are a fast and athletic group led by linebacker Justin Anderson, who leads the team in tackles with 123. This week versus Tulane, they have to be able to set the edge to try to funnel everything back inside in the running game. They can't allow those guards to climb to the second level. Otherwise, it could be a long day for that Cajuns defense. The X Factor for Tulane will be their ability to sustain drives. Right now, this is an offense that has to be able to stay ahead of the chains in order to be successful. And their best defense could possibly be keeping UL's offense off the field. So this offense, which is only converting 38% of their third downs, and they have to make sure that number gets up to the mid 40s in order to have a chance to come away victorious versus the Raging Cajuns. And the X Factor for UL will be their run defense. A lot of times teams can have success running the football versus this UL defense. And if they're not able to shed blocks and make plays at or behind the line of scrimmage and play with better run fits, Orleans Darkway and company could have a field day versus this Raging Cajun defense. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game. For Tulane, they have to attack the perimeter in the running game. I believe they can get the edge on this UL defense and have some success running off tackles, so that's why it's important that they try to attack the perimeter in the running game. And look at those two defensive tackles, Chris Davenport and Julius Wormsley versus that Cajun's interior offensive line who runs a lot of read option out of the pistol. If they can get that interior pressure, they can slow down that Cajun's ground game and put them in backed up situations. Now also look at the big matchup on the flanks. Lorenzo Dawson, outstanding All-American cornerback going against Jabal Robinson, who's a big physical presence. If Dawes could win this battle, it takes away a lot of what the Cajuns want to do throwing the football. And for the Cajuns in this ballgame, they're going to need efficient play from the quarterback spot, whether that's Terrence Broadway or Brooks Hake or even Jalen Nixon. They have to play efficient and keep that offense on pace with the short to intermediate passing game and not make mistakes. The Tulane Green Wave defense does a great job enforcing turnovers, so the quarterback play has to be efficient. And on defense, you have to take away their number one option, Ryan Grant, the outstanding NFL prospect at wide receiver. Bracketing him could do you justice defensively in trying to force Nick Montana to go to other targets. And you have to make the green wave earn it. You can't give up big plays, not only in the running game, but also in the passing game. So that defense has to play with discipline. They have to play assignment football if they want to have a chance of knocking off Tulane. Now here are some 2014 draft prospects you want to keep an eye on in this ball game for Tulane. Outstanding receiving prospect and Ryan Grant, who's already committed to playing in the Senior Bowl. 6'2", 190 runs, precise routes, and has excellent hands. And Cairo Santos won the Lou Groves Award last year. That should tell you all you need to know about his kicking skills. And I'm a big fan of Orleans Darkway and what he's done in the backfield for that Green Wave program. And you look at the two defensive tackles. We talked about these guys earlier. Chris Davenport is your classic one-tech, 6'4", 335, a guy that's a space eater. Next to him is Julius Wormsley, a guy that beats you with his quickness at 6'2", 270, may transition to being a five technique or three technique at the next level. 
And for UL, you look at some junior prospects to start off with. Defensive tackle Justin Hamilton, 6'2", 295, a rock in the middle of that 3-4 defense. And Jamal Robinson at 6'3", 210. This is the guy they're going to try to hit big plays deep down the field with. He can high point the football with that frame. And you look at the return game. Darryl Surgeon is a guy that can carve out a nice long career at the next level with his return skills, 5'11", 190. And keep an eye on center Andre Huval, 6'2", 285, one of the better centers in the Sun Belt Conference. Southern Miss took on Troy back in the 2008 New Orleans Bowl, and it was a back-and-forth affair with both teams matching school for score. Now, Troy was holding a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter when quarterback Austin Davis of Southern Miss, who was the game's MVP, led the Golden Eagles on two scoring drives, sending the game into overtime, where they would ultimately win 30-27. This was the inaugural game of the Sugar Bowl in 1935 as Tulane took on Temple and the Owls were ranked 15th in the country with a 7-0-2 record and were coached by the legendary Pop Warner. Tulane was 9-1 and SEC champs and they had a strong defense that year posting four defensive shutouts and only allowing one team to score over 20 points and that was a road loss to Colgate. The Green Wave were down 14-0 to the Owls but stormed back to score 20 unanswered to win 20-14 finishing the season 10-1. The 2011 New Orleans Bowl featured Louisiana taking on San Diego State, and this was the first bowl game in 41 years for the Raging Cajuns, who had an 8-4 record that year. It was well worth the wait for their fans as they outgunned the Aztecs of San Diego State 32-30 with kicker Brett Baer nailing a 50-yard field goal as time expired. Eddie Price was definitely a campus legend, one of the best high school prospects in the country at the time. Price went to World War II instead before going to Tulane as a 21-year-old freshman, and he led the SEC in rushing in 1948 with over 1,100 yards and finished his Green Wave career with over 3,000 yards on the ground. One of the best receivers in program history was Brandon Stokely, a guy that made the spectacular catch look routine. He caught over 240 passes for over 3,700 yards and 25 touchdowns in his raging Cajun career, and that type of success definitely earns you a spot as a campus legend. I like the Raging Cajuns in this ballgame. I believe the biggest matchup they'll try to exploit is their backs in the passing game versus those two lane Green Wave linebackers. And I think they have the advantage with the speed of the Elijah McGuire and the power of Alonzo Harris in space catching the football. And I also think defensively they'll do a great job in slowing down the Green Wave ground game to get these guys off the field. So I see Louisiana winning the third straight New Orleans Bowl.